Hello, this is Professor Torson. This is the recorded lecture for Chapter 16. Chapter 16 presents human genetics and the human genome. We can look at the human genome in terms of karyotypes, which are a visual representation of all the chromosomes in an individual. You can see an example of a karyotype on the bottom left-hand corner of slide two. Karyotypes are useful to screen individuals for chromosomal abnormalities like having an extra or a missing chromosome. Pedigrees, which are shown on the right-hand side, are essentially family trees that show an inheritance pattern for a specific tree. The process of karyotyping is shown on slide three. A sample is obtained from a person and the cells are grown in culture. The drug colchicine is applied. And this is important because colchicine stops the cell cycle in late prophase or early metaphase. During late prophase, remember, the chromosomes are at their most condensed. And therefore, when the sample is further processed, the chromosomes are much easier to see because again, the chromosomes are in their condensed form because they were in late prophase or early metaphase. From this, the karyotype itself can be generated, and then the individual's chromosomes can be studied to ensure that there are the correct number of chromosomes and there are no large structural defects in the chromosomes. Pedigrees are special family trees that show the inheritance pattern of a particular trait over several generations. Pedigrees can be used for uh, more fun characteristics or traits like hair color, but it can also be used to track uh, diseases in families, as was shown um, two slides ago with the pedigree on hemophilia in the royal family. To read a pedigree, you need to remember that square shapes are males and circular shapes are females. In addition, shaded shapes are affected individuals or individuals that have the trait of interest. For more information on how to read a pedigree and how to use a pedigree to solve genetic questions, please visit the YouTube playlist. The Human Genome Project began in 1990 with the goal to sequence the entire human genome. The project was completed back in 2003 with an estimated cost of $3 billion. Once you have sequenced the genome of individuals, you can look at genomic studies, including single nucleotide polymorphisms and genome-wide association studies. The human genome is not the only genome that has been sequenced. Many organisms' genomes have been sequenced, which has brought about the field of comparative genomics. Comparative genomics compares the genomes of various organisms, which can be used to study the evolutionary history and the evolutionary relatedness of various species. Chromosomal abnormalities like duplication, inversion, deletion, and reciprocal translocation, as shown on slide 11, are larger changes to the chromosome. 
In this case, we are not talking about a change in a single nucleotide or even a couple of nucleotides. We are talking about large structural changes. Changes like duplications, inversions, deletions, and translocations can be identified on a karyotype. Mutations like a frame shift mutation or a point mutation, as described in the previous chapter, would not be able to be identified on a karyotype. Chromosomal abnormalities like non-disjunction, which we learned about back in chapter 10, are shown here on slide 12. Because this is a difference in the number of chromosomes, a karyotype would be a good tool to use to identify whether an individual has um, the correct number of chromosomes. One of the most common uh, conditions that result from non-disjunction or the failure of chromosomes to separate correctly during cell division is Down syndrome. Here on this karyotype, we see that chromosome 21 has three copies. So this individual has one extra copy of chromosome 21. Single gene mutations um, are underlying many human conditions and many human diseases. These mutations would not be viewable on a karyotype. To identify these mutations, you would need to utilize DNA sequencing techniques. On this slide and the following slide are several examples of human conditions which have been linked to a specific disease. For example, in Huntington's disease, which is a neurodegenerative condition, there ha has been a gene identified. Interestingly, this is an autosomal dominant trait. So an individual only needs to inherit one copy of that dominant Huntington gene in order to have Huntington's disease. Another example of a condition or disease that is caused by a mutation in a single gene is PKU. PKU is a condition in which an individual lacks the enzyme that converts phenylalanine to tyrosine. Phenylalanine is contained in foods that have artificial sweeteners, which is why you'll see a warning like this on some foods that have artificial sweeteners in it. Cystic fibrosis was a condition we talked about earlier in chapter 11. This is another example of a disease caused by a mutation in a single gene. Hemophilia, again, a disease discussed back in chapter 11, is another example of a condition caused by a mutation in a single gene. Genetic counseling is already available. Gene therapy, though, is still very much experimental. Genetic counseling uses a combination of pedigrees, which again are coming from family histories, as well as DNA sequencing to determine an individual's probability of developing a certain condition. Genetic testing is commonly used on fetuses. Amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling are both ways 
to sample fetal tissue. Cells are obtained, cultured, and a karyotype can be generated to look for large chromosomal abnormalities, or the cells can be processed for DNA sequencing. In addition, for individuals undergoing in vitro fertilization, where an egg is fertilized in a laboratory setting, the embryo can be tested for specific genetic diseases prior to implantation in a human. This concludes the recorded lecture for chapter 16.